Hello everyone, in this video we're taking a look at Twister OS version 1.8. Now this is on the Raspberry Pi Model 4 and it was recommended to us when we did your week on Raspberry Pi 4 experiment. Yeah, because I had a lot of issues with trying to get DRM working and so everyone in the comments was just saying you must try Twister OS and we had recorded the whole series of videos pretty much before we started releasing them on YouTube, which meant that we couldn't take advantage of that during the actual week um, with the Raspberry Pi. So that's why we're doing it now. Yeah. But it did solve a lot of issues for you, the DRM in particular. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. No, no issues at all. It just plays the video. It's happy. <laughs> yeah. And one thing I did notice in it, there's a lot of files installed on it. A lot of programs. It took ages to write the image. I lost track of how long it was because I was working at the time and I thought, oh, actually I actually meant to finish it, see if that was finished. And I looked at it and it's still writing. <laughs> like, hell. Uh, this is the same SD card we've used before, but it's the XFC desktop, which I don't think we actually looked at last time. There's two versions of Chromium included, or more like two launchers for Chromium. There's a media edition and a normal regular browser. So we haven't done the media edition and just tried to play a video from channel four. But in the end you found another source for your programs that you're trying to watch anyway. So that was yeah, yeah. not really so, worth it. So basically the uh, program that I was trying to watch on the Raspberry Pi previously, which was Sword Art Online Alicization. So it turns out that Channel 4 only shows about the first half of that series, and so I had to go to another uh, website in order to get the rest of the series, and that website does not have any DRM issues. It has adverts, uh, which get nicely skipped by no track, but it doesn't have any DRM issues at all, and so that was a bit, that was a bit annoying anyway. Yeah. Did you play YouTube videos on it? Yeah. I, I did it myself. We didn't take obviously we didn't record it, but no. I did take did watch a YouTube video, not a high not a very high quality one, but it didn't have any issues. No, I think like the rest of the operating systems you're limited at like um seven twenty. Oh. So it, it didn't really vary between Ubuntu and the Arch base, so with the sound I just had to select the audio input and output. At one point I believed that there was it was dropping the selection that I'd done between reboots, but I'm now starting to wonder if that were linked to the theme choice. Yeah, the the theme change did seem to alter an awful lot, and yeah. we'll come on to this. It, it involved a lot of rebooting, which, uh, yeah, it's quite shocking for a Linux distro. Annoyingly, the Bluetooth kept turning on, even though you disabled it every time. Yeah, so after reboot, it turns itself on, and that's something that kind of happens every time so you have to turn it off mm. there's a really nice GUI for the Raspberry Pi configuration here I think this is just a GUI for the Raspberry config unfortunately we came across some issues when it came to changing the password so when we tried to change it through the GUI it just wasn't letting us and one thing that came up was that it was from the GUI, it just asked for the new password and didn't ask for the current password. Whereas when you did it from the command line, it asked for the current password before the new password. So I have a feeling that what was happening was it wasn't, for some reason, it wasn't recording or keeping track of the fact that we already had a password set, wasn't asking for it. Unfortunately, because of the fact that we couldn't change the password, it caused some issues with changing the locale and setting that to the settings that we wanted. It was only after getting the password sorted and then doing a reboot that we were actually able to then go ahead and change the settings of the locale, which we managed to do eventually. It's a bit annoying you had to reboot after setting the locale. That's yeah. too, too much Windows here. This is a theme changer and it offers a few different themes here, mainly focused on Windows. 95 XP, there's two versions for Windows 10, a couple for Apple and a version of Windows 7 at the end. And uh, remarked on when we were looking at this is that even though it's Windows, the uh, the desktop wallpaper is Twister. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird though, changing the theme requires a reboot. Mm. I've used other theme switches before 
and they've never required a reboot. Maybe a log out and log back in, but not a reboot. <laughs> One thing I found interesting was the fact that when you change the theme, it also actually changes the kind of sp- splash screen icon thing when you're actually starting up. So I found that a nice touch. Ah, oh, the Plymouth boot screen. And now we come back to the default view for Twister. This is XFCE version 4.12.5. Yeah, so something about this particular original theme that confused me. So we have separately the menu along the top and the dock along the bottom. When I was uh, first having a play around with this desktop, I'd opened up some programs and then I went to the dock and not having much experience with the dock, I think this is a bit of an uh, Apple thing, I want to say. I tried to open the programs from the doc that I'd already opened and it would just create a new instance of that program. So that that confused me a little bit. And then I realised, ah, you actually have to look at the menu along the top and that has all the programs you've already opened. And the doc along the bottom is just for launching new instances. So that was something that confused me um, a little bit to start. Kind of got over it eventually. (laughs) The Twister OS does seem to be focused quite heavily on games. There's quite a few pre-installed on here, including Steam. I was surprised to see a Steam build. We did have some difficulties getting some of the games working. That is because, for example, trying to get the Metroid game working, I think it's another Metroid 2 remake, we needed to have a joystick, and the one that we had access to at the time, unfortunately, was not being picked up. That is the only one we had at the time, but that meant that we could then uh, not try that game out. But we did manage to get Ski Free working, so it's a classic 90s skiing game. Yeah, and this is running in Wine. Mm. They included a Windows game to run in Wine. (laughs) Strange decision. Mm. Very weird. There is a small software installer included here with recommended software, although it's a very basic list. And I'm I'm surprised it's so small, really, for a curated software installer. I was going to say, there seems to be a very heavy focus on IDEs and not much else. Even under internet, there's no mention of other web browsers, which just would be something basic to include. If we look in the GNOME software installer, Firefox is there. It's not that it's a case of Firefox isn't available for Twister, it's there in the repositories, so that could have been something to include in their curated software installer. RetroPie is included, so you could create a classic gaming system. But I just noticed it didn't appear properly here on the screen recording. Although when we opened it, it showed Emulation Station, but I couldn't proceed any further with it without a joypad. But it's something I've seen before, so I wasn't too overly worried about it. And you weren't really looking for a gaming system at this point. No. We have a retro gaming system downstairs connected to the TV with Libra Elec, which we do play. Mm-hmm. And have been playing recently. Yes, as a side note, we've recently been getting into the uh, Streets of Rage series. And we've recently been particularly getting into the Japanese version of the third game, which is Bare Knuckle 3. Maybe I might do a retro gaming thing again. Hmm. We haven't done that for ages on this no. channel. I noticed Cody was here, so it could be a uh, home theatre PC. It satisfies a number of different uh, areas. We have the sensors viewer here. So, uh, yeah, it's running a bit hot at the moment, the Pi, but we're doing the screen capturing from here as well. I don't have uh, graphics input or HDMI capture card for my main system, which would have really helped because this does look a lot worse than it really is. Although not to say it was exactly blisteringly fast, was it? There no. is a bit of lag in this without the capture. <laughs> there is quite a lag, particularly when you just open the application launcher. Noticeably, noticeably so, I'd say a full second or two, and that's without doing the recording, as Quid said. Under the hood, we have the Linux kernel 5.4, and it is the ARM V7L kernel. This is a 32-bit kernel, which... It's a bit of a letdown, really, for the Raspberry Pi 4 because it is 64-bit capable and some of the distros we looked at were 64-bit. And I think there might be a little speed difference there. 
although it's hard to say how much because we didn't actually review an XFC-based desktop at the time, but we looked at the KDE Plasma, which you'd think would lag more than this, and I think that performance was better. Hmm. Um, we can see that Twister is based on Raspbian or Debian version 10. This is a look at the Funar file manager and the icon set they've chosen to use in their default theme. The icons do vary, and when it's the Windows theme, they are the just like the Windows icons, which is quite amusing. <laughs> this is a look at the icons and themes that are included on the system. Quite a few of the styles I've seen on other XFCE desktops before, but the icons are a bit different, and I suppose an interesting idea they've gone for, including the various different Windows themes. And especially going all out and including the icons, not just doing the layout, but mm. going all the way with the icons. Yeah, and then you hover over, for example, what appears to be uh, the word icon, and then you actually get LibreOffice <laughs> writer. Yeah, the Microsoft Office ones, and you get LibreOffice instead. <laughs> now we're going to finish out with a bit of Minesweeper here, but that didn't work properly. Yeah, so I started playing the game, and this was actually... This video is from the first time we decided to try out Minds because, you know, may as well keep to the tradition and I like playing Minds. But for some reason, this wasn't working properly. I would right click initially and then nothing would happen. And then I'd right click again and I'd get the flag with the question mark. So as you can see, ah, it has registered one flag. That's probably where I've right clicked. And um, you can see the count going up, but it's not actually showing proper flags. So for some reason, the icon wasn't working for that. So it made it a, just a tad unplayable. Hmm. Um, it, well, it at least means you can't keep track of how many mines you think you have. Yeah. And this is the GNOME Minesweeper. So you'd think the GTK application would work hmm. in the XFCE desktop, which is fully working on the GTK toolkit. So yeah, sadly, we can't finish with that. But what are your final thoughts on it? I think it was quite interesting initially. It was like, oh, great, this has solved so many of the first problems that we were having. The DRM, the setup, the sound, all that was solved immediately. And I think for me that started positively. I think similar for you. Mm. And then more problems started appearing. I think for me, I probably had a more kind of generally positive outlook on it. I mean... Yes, the, the main negative with this one, I think, is the performance. There is a definite lag in opening some programs. However, comparing this to my experience of doing the week initially, and I will admit that I don't remember a lot of the details, like the specifics of the performance of every single operating system we looked at. But in terms of the positives, I'd say they outweigh the negatives. Mm. What I was looking for here was something where I could just save the web, watch some videos, and it definitely solved the DRM issues, which was the main thing, and it's the main reason why this was recommended to us so much. And it had a great selection of games, and although, you know, you say I'm not in it for the gaming, at the same time I do like little small games like Mines, although that unfortunately <laughs> didn't work, but we've got the skiing game, those kind of like little uh, small games uh, I quite enjoy using. Um, but I really liked the theme, the theming, and the amount of effort they went to for that I really appreciate. And I thought it just has a really, really nice look and feel throughout the different themes, and I like that. It was nice, I seem to think I went through some of the older themes as well. We took a bit of time, although of course it requires a reboot. <laughs> and yeah. going through and being like oh this reminds me of my childhood all these icons and everything with <laughs> some of the older versions of windows yeah. um so that was quite fun and uh, to be able to like play play through that kind of version those old versions and it be a workable system i mean it's not really windows under the hood but then you get you get the um the best of both worlds really in my opinion if you're if you're like me and you find have some nostalgia about old versions of windows um and then you get you know okay-ish performance uh, it's mm. not great but yeah i'd say i'd say on the whole i had quite a positive experience using twister os okay. um but i mean just for using it for one or two programs at a time it's not bad 
Uh, for more heavy usage, I can see how it would get a bit of a drag as, as time went on. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So you might keep it then? Yeah, I'm quite pleased with how it is and uh, might go back to the... Although I like how the Twister OS theming looks. The, the dock confused me a bit, but I, I'd kind of like probably want to go back and have a look at Windows 95 or something <laughs> theming because uh, that'd be quite fun. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. And we'll see you all later.